let me tell you real quick the reason that I didn't put it on the 3 and 9 and the reason I put it on the 12 and the 6. It has to do with topspin. So there's actually a philosophy out there that I agree with that the more center axis stability that you have relative to the swing weight of the racket, the more topspin friendly a racket is. Because if you have a lot of stability on the 3 and 9 and you're trying to brush over the ball when you hit it, the fact that your racket is stabilized at the three and nine makes your racket less likely to kind of have this floppy characteristic. So if you have a racket that's more stabilized in the center, it will be more likely to flop. Now, somebody might argue that that takes away from the stability, but these words like stability, they're kind of like misunderstood words or maybe just poorly chosen words because they sort of lead to a way of thinking that doesn't necessarily translate to the type of tennis or the type of ball that you might want to be hitting. So. There's kind of an in-depth study that was done out there that I'll link in the description, but it might change your idea entirely about what makes a topspin racket so topspin friendly. But anyway, the long story short and the easy way of thinking about it for me, if you have a lot of weight at the three and the nine, imagine like a lot of weight just because it'll make it easier for your brain to imagine this. Like literally imagine that you put like 50 grams here and 50 grams here, which is insane. But just imagine how hard it would be to flop this racket like this if there was that much weight here. Now, imagine that you're swinging the ball and when you come into contact and the ball hits right here on your sweet spot, doesn't it make sense that the momentum of your racket moving forward with so much weight at the three and the nine would kind of automatically correct itself, right? Because there's so much stability here and here that when the racket hits the ball, it's gonna want to stabilize a little bit. Again, because you have so much momentum traveling in one direction from these, which are now the top and bottom of the racket because you're swinging it sideways. What's gonna happen when the racket collides with something right in the middle? These two forces are gonna stabilize and it's gonna force the racket to want to stabilize like this. And suddenly the trajectory of your swing has been kind of flattened out. Whereas if you have a lot of weight here and here and no weight here and here, the ball, the racket, um, is going to kind of want to flop over the ball, right? Because there's no weight on the sides of the racket, no stability, if you want to use that word. Um, and that will translate to a heavier topspin ball because the racket kind of flops and brushes over the ball in addition to other things that you're doing with your swing mechanics, of course. But I would honestly argue that I think the most topspin friendly characteristic of your racket is actually the stability relative to the swing weight of your racket. Nobody talks about that. I feel like nobody understands that. And if you ever get into some kind of physics conversation on the forums, you'll see super toxic conversations that kind of support both arguments from a pseudoscientific way. But at the end of the day, some of this scientific stuff doesn't necessarily translate to the experience that you're gonna have as a tennis player, but that's my philosophy. That's my way of explaining it. But if you actually wanna see an in-depth tennis warehouse university study that was published, I will link that in the description below. And if you guys wanna read through all that, maybe you'll come to a similar understanding that I did as well. Anyway, so that's why I put lead tape on the 12 and the six of my racket and not the three and nine.